Good morning. There you go. Keep breathing. That's it. We were in the weight room working out again, getting ready for the season, and uh, I was squatting. It was, we had just gotten in there, we were still warming up. Uh, I had about 500 pounds on the bar, and uh, as I went down on probably like the second or third rep, out of nowhere I just felt a snap in my back, and I had no idea what happened, and I immediately dropped to the floor, couldn't get up, couldn't really feel my legs even. Uh, just had a shooting pain down both legs, everything, the whole nine yards. I was thinking, could I ever walk again, honestly? <laughs> I had no idea. I actually went and saw a, a back specialist in Houston. He showed me the herniation between L4, L5, and I had other smaller bulging discs above and below. He recommended we do steroid shots first, which I did two of, didn't really get any help. And I went back in for a follow-up, and he was like, well, we need to start looking at some surgeries. And something in my head just clicked, I was like, there's no way at 20 years old I need a back surgery. I kind of always used YouTube as like an outlet for basically anything. Just started looking up like back pain, lower back injuries, like rehab stuff. And that's when I came across Dr. Johnson's video. What he was going through with each patient, like the pain that they were describing, the compression feeling, the whole nine yards, everything. I was like, that's me. That's in a nutshell, that's what I'm feeling right now. <laughs> So I need to find someone that can help me like this. And then I actually scrolled down his little description. It said, your Houston chiropractor. And I was like, oh, that's convenient. That's about an hour away. Close your eyes and bend your head forward and backwards for me, please. And then back to neutral. And take a look. You're looking pretty good, though. A lot better than you were that first time I saw you. I'm going to line up your shoulders, your clavicles, and your anterior ribs here, too. This will help that mid thoracic spine as well. Because this is all connected biomechanically. Now, when you go forward and backwards again, tell me if this feels any smoother to you than the previous ones. Yeah, definitely going back. It's on a swivel now, huh? Yeah. You know, I started getting chiropractic care when I was your age. That's what made me want to be a chiropractor. What happened to you? I, I, I fell off the couch playing with my sister and, and bumped my head and gave myself a reverse whiplash. And then two months after that, I started getting severe asthma. I'd never had asthma in my entire life. They just kept giving me pills, steroids, inhalers. I had to have allergy shots twice a week. And I did that from the sixth grade all the way to the eighth grade. And, and my asthma was getting worse. So finally my mom, and none of that ever worked, by the way. Mm -hmm. So finally my mom took me to a chiropractor she was referred to. And he comes out and says, well, after my history and examination of you and, and looking at your x-rays, you have a condition known as verbal subluxation. And that was just like, oh God, I got submarines in me. You know, I didn't know what that meant. And he says, what we can do to help you is to give you a chiropractic adjustment. And I said, well, what's that? And he goes, I'll show you. And within two months of me getting adjusted, maybe once a week or once every other week, I, I had no more asthma, no more allergies, didn't have to go see any more hospitals or medical doctors. And I was back playing sports again and, and being with all my friends again. And I had a life again. And that's when I decided I was going to be a chiropractor. Right. <laughs> yep. So, so maybe you grow up and be a chiropractor too someday. I was born on July 6, 1958, in a small town in southern Illinois. Yeah, and, and when I was growing up, you know, my mom and dad, neither one had a college education. They would just went to high school. As I was going through high school, I was already becoming a chiropractor with my studies in high school because I took every class that I thought would be closely related to chiropractic, including speech class which I excelled in. After I graduated from high school, started 
uh, going to college and taking pre-med classes at a junior college called Wabash Valley Junior College. And you had to have a C average or better even to be accepted into Palmer College of Chiropractic. And that was my dream ever since the eighth grade. So I sent all my transcripts up to Palmer and I was accepted into Palmer College of Chiropractic. And I could have been a medical doctor had I wanted to be, but I chose to be a chiropractor because the way I was treated by the chiropractor was so much more personable. It was so much more effective and, and it felt great. It was just the perfect thing for me at that point in time in my life. Okay, let me lift your beautiful hair out of the way. There we go. Okay, just breathe through your nose for me now, Raquel. Just like that. Home run. You didn't forget how. No. <laughs> and looky there, you're still kicking. <laughs> I couldn't walk. It was so bad one night that I tried to get out of the bed and take a step to walk to the car. I woke up in the middle of the night and was like, I have to go to the hospital. Actually, one of the paramedics said, this kind of sounds like what I had and no one could diagnose it. So he said, here's a card for my chiropractor. So I was like, I'm gonna try anything. Um, I know a lot of people think that, I guess it's not real medicine or it's quacks. I just tell people my story. I went from not walking Literally could not take a step to then in four to six weeks being able to not have pain anymore and um, be able to get on stage in a swimsuit and walk in heels. Believe what you want, but that's, that's my story. That's really what this entire documentary is about. Texas citizens' freedom of choice to choose to come see a chiropractor first if they wish to and not have that dictated to them by the Texas Medical Association. The Texas Medical Association's agenda through the past couple of decades has been really to monopolize health care in the state of Texas. The TMA wants to control everything. Not only are we defending lawsuits from the TMA suing the Texas Board of Chiropractic Examiners, but we're actually having to go even above that and get into legislative issues to actually change the law. If, if, if a patient comes to see me for their neck pain and their back pain and their headaches and their sciatica and all those things, they're not going to the medical doctor. So who's losing the office visits and the surgeries and the procedures and the revenues? It really all boils down to money when you get down to it. We exist, now remember this, with one of the most powerful, rich lobbying groups, the American Medical Association. We still exist with them trying to eliminate this profession after all these years. At one point, the Texas Medical Board joined with the Texas Medical Association to sue the chiropractic board. The Texas Medical Association's gone after the podiatrists. They've gone after the marriage and family therapists. These are all non-MD provider groups the TMA wants to hold down. Year after year, session after session, our goal going, going forward is not expansion of scope. That's a misnomer. Clarification of scope. We don't want to be Stone Age chiropractic, and honestly, if you're a patient, you don't want that either. The first year I was working there, I, I started calling him the Tasmanian Devil. On his days off, he'd just come running in to the office on the x-axis. That's why his right shoulder appears a little lower than his left shoulder. There you go. Oh, you should have felt that go. This guy's kind of, oh my gosh, he's really intense. And then after that, I kind of, okay, this is just him. Yeah, we just, we became good friends. He had an ad in the newspaper he was looking for help. Because I didn't really know anything about chiropractic. Um, I didn't know what it was or anything. So I went for the interview and he had me there for five hours. And I finally had to say to him, are you gonna hire me or not? And he came back and said, um, yep, you're hired. We worked really good together. We learned how to communicate, give the look, you know. When <laughs> he does all the physical hard work um, and I do the administrative. They walk out like, wow, you know, I can't believe that, that was, a, that is, a, even more than what I expected, that a lot of that. Um, uh, man, I can't believe how much better I feel. Or, wow, that's a lot of adjustment and stuff, you know. So yeah, yeah, I hear all that, yeah.
a lot easier to study after this. Yeah, that's true. like that, home run. That's great. Yes, sir. Okay. There you go. Very nice. Yes, sir. Right down the gut. Yes, sir. It's on swivel. When, when people say your head's on swivel, they don't know <laughs> what it's like until they get their neck adjusted properly, huh? Yes, sir. So I joined the Navy straight out of high school um, to so-called accelerate my life. I went into aviation, worked on F-18 fighter jets. Very dangerous job, but worked on the, the flight deck of the USS Nimitz. Unfortunately, my second year, I had a nasty fall off one of the jets. I heard fuel leaking. I got up out of the cockpit, looked behind, and fuel was leaking out of another aircraft. I usually just slid down the wing, but you're not supposed to do that. You're supposed to do it the right way and come down the ladder. Well, one of my fellow sailors had put the ladder up, so when I went to take a step, there was no step there. My hip came in contact with the ground first and, and uh, shoulder and then whiplashed my head into the ground. I was knocked out for, if I had to guess, probably three to four minutes. Surgery was scheduled. The VA sent me home with around 120 Norcos a month. So what ended up happening was I got addicted. The whole situation climaxed and I overdosed. And you know, it almost cost me my life. The pain was, was still bothering me to the point where I had to, I felt like I had to go lay down every 30, 45 minutes. You know, I was spending a lot of time on YouTube and I came across Dr. Johnson's page. Dr. Johnson's got me to the point where I can actually sit in a classroom for an hour, two hours without being in a tremendous amount of pain. I've been able to work more. I've been able to go back to school. I'm studying kinesiology as a prerequisite for chiropractic. I've, ex I've been so astonished at the relief I've received here at this office that I've decided to go in, in that direction myself. My dad, he decided to open up his own practice like he had done in Austin and done again in California. It was just a couple patients. Uh, he would come in here for one or two patients just for the whole day. Uh, which was really cool. I remember we got this laptop and I did all the scheduling. He just did his thing. Marketed, talked to everyone he knew in the elevator. God bless, handed out thousands of business cards. Thousands of them. Regardless of where we went, for whatever we were doing, if we were going out to eat, if we were getting any oil changed on the car, he was marketing himself and his business. When we had first started the practice, it's when I was in, I think a sophomore. Smartphones really became a thing and everyone had YouTube on their smartphone. And it became a very popular search engine. And I remember we were leaving an office depot. And I was like, you know what you should do? You should do YouTube. You know, why would we do YouTube? And it's like, well, people like to know what they're buying. And then I think it was maybe a week or two later um, that he did his first YouTube video. I think he was a little nervous on his first one. And before long, it was you know, 3,000, 4,000. Subscriber count uh, kept climbing. I think it took us about four years to get to 100,000 subscribers on one of the channels. And then now, just in this year alone, we're about to double that. Um, so it's grown so incredibly quickly, which is interesting the way YouTube works, is the more popular you are, the more popular you get. This is your Dr. Gregory Johnson. My name is Mark Rivera, coming all the way from Guam. I am a huge crack addict. YouTube videos, I mean, just doesn't do justice. I mean, you have to be on that table to actually experience the whole thing. I've had headaches for two solid years. They're gone. I came in very slowly. <laughs> but I walked out feeling really good and can't wait to come back again. <laughs> I come from LA, all on my feet go up, I'm like, oh God, here we go. And then that towel comes around. I just take a deep breath and then it's, uh, it's just lights out for a split second and 
almost like like Sub Zero from Mortal Kombat or something. that back then we'll be off to the races again we'll see I'm trying to see if I'm gonna go back to wrestling are you yes but I just gonna try to go back one more time yeah, see what happens yeah. this is Steve I mean it was tough when I went back after him but if I, I need to give it more time all right you got some deviations going on right now it's been a while have you had any new accidents or trauma since I've seen you just another baby it's crazy I always get asked um, how'd you get into professional wrestling is that something that you always wanted to do and the short answer is no. I was a huge fan though. I wanted to be a crossbreed between Sable and China. I wanted to be scary and mean, but I wanted to be sexy and elegant at the same time. I remember as early as in sixth grade having incredible amount of back pain and headaches and migraines. And I'd go to school every day and I'm like, oh my God, but it was from my neck and my back. I have kyphosis and scoliosis. So you could really say that I should have never ever have been a professional wrestler. So. Once I got into wrestling and it was even worse, and then I started seeing Dr. Gregory Johnson, I just put all my trust in him. And immediately after my first adjustment, I just, I felt like all this weight off my shoulders. I just felt like I could go run a marathon. It's like a high. I'm like, oh my God, I wanna go wrestle right now. All right, but so tell me how you did since your last visit. Um, I feel awesome. I'm almost like scared to stop my treatments because oh. I don't want to go back to it. Oh, uh-huh. Yeah, I feel really good. I have no pain. I have no soreness. I wow. Have nothing at all. Wow. Uh, I have. I still have some numbness uh -huh. in my leg. Right. Um, but Is it as intense as it was? No, it's not. Okay, well I'm that's starting, a good I'm sign. To feel some tingling. Okay, that means your nerves are still working then. And, yeah. That's a praise the Lord sign right there. Okay, I'm gonna have you flex your head forward and backwards for me, please, Butch. And then neutral. Playing in a game's like being in a car accident every time you play. Yeah, absolutely. I heard you say that before, and that's so true. It is true. It's so true. Okay, nice deep breath. Just like that. Feel that all the way down? Yes. Good deal. Oh, yes. Yes, sir. So you, being a running back, you've taken years and years of compressive stresses to your spine. Right. But I bet you this is the first time you've ever had your spine decompressed fully. First time ever. Yep. Yes. I mean, you can't get this just with inversion. Okay, let me have you tilt left a little Will you right big toe. There you go. Mm. Now tilt right where you left ear. There you go. Gotcha. Oh my goodness. Yes, sir. Can y'all hear that? Oh yeah, you can hear that. <laughs> wow. Crack Ace gonna love you too, Butch. <laughs> oh my gosh. My name is Butch Wolfolk and some people may know me from my years in the NFL. I was constantly hurt. I had broken ribs and uh, two knee surgeries, two back surgeries. When you're playing football, you have injuries and you think they go away because the pain goes away. Well, actually they don't, they just lay dormant. I've had two surgeries and both and the doctors, both doctors told me they can repair the problems in my back with the surgery. Well, I came out of surgery, I still have the pain. You get tired of pain. And they say pain is your friend. No, pain is never your friend. But you know, it's funny, I, I was watching YouTube, I'm kind of a YouTube geek sometimes. I particularly was looking at the chiropractors. The one that I was looking at the most just happened to be here in Houston. So I called and got an appointment and my expectations were pretty low because I know I had nerve damage. I haven't felt this leg right here in my right leg in about four years. And amazingly, after the first treatment, I felt some tingling in my toes. The numbness is still there in my leg, but I felt some tingling. I haven't felt that in four years. And I'm, I'm very optimistic. Um, I'm sorry. My wife has to deal with it. I'm a tough guy. I think I can take it. But to see her get emotional, and to see her have to, you know, carry the burden sometimes, 
when the kids were younger, she had to take care of them. And now to see her see me out of pain and the look she has in her eyes, she got kind of misty eyed the other day. And it just lets me know just how important that is. It's not just a hindrance upon you, but your entire family. Oftentimes you see a player that gets hurt on the field and then they cart him away and everybody's clapping and he's doing a thumbs up. And that's all most people know. They never know about the rehab, the recovery, the surgeries, all those kind of things. And I think that if more people knew, they probably wouldn't support the game as much as they do. He told me the other day uh, that he was going to take a Zumba class with me. <laughs> so that was a good sign. And he talked about, you know, running and jogging. Those are things that have not been in our conversation in years. You bet. Thank you, Butch. This is your Houston chiropractor, Dr. Gregory Johnson, coming to you from Advanced Chiropractic Relief in Houston, Texas, where we adjust people's spines to make them healthier human beings. We'll see y'all soon. Hi, this is your Houston chiropractor, Dr. Gregory Johnson, and your future Houston chiropractor, Tristan Wint. He's not a Texas licensed chiropractor yet, so we can't call him Dr. Wint yet. But, Tristan, uh, he came to see me because I was his last resort before he had to go get the injections and the surgeries that the medical doctors were telling me he had to have. Came in and said, I need that ring dinger thing you do. And I said, well, let me examine you first. He was, he was a little bit in shock on the first one, just like I was. But boy, he was back there the next week getting another one done because it helped him. And then by the third or fourth week, he was already starting to get back into working out again to get back on playing football again for Sam Houston State. He, he always was asking really inquisitive questions to me. And I really started telling him about the physiology and the biomechanics of chiropractic and how it all worked. And then it just hit me like a light bulb. I said, you know what? You would make a great chiropractor. And he goes, you know, I would. <laughs> so that, that's how Tristan and, and I got together. And then he's, he's getting his master's degree in uh, kinesiology at Sam Houston State University and he had to do a 400 hour internship for that and he's still doing that. And so he's in our office now full time and he's learning every single aspect of our office. And Tristan, I know, was brought to us by God. honestly like astonishing like I don't think about it often but like how quickly I went from being bedridden to playing football because I I thought my football career was over out of high school I thought I'd, I'd never play football again the short like month and a half two month span where it went from not being able to walk to I'm suiting up to start my first collegiate practice was pretty crazy. My freshman, sophomore year in college, I was almost like everybody else. I didn't really know what I wanted to do to be exact. But then after the injury and after meeting Dr. Johnson and talking with him over the, like, the course of like my three or four adjustments and then beyond really, once I started playing football, he started talking to me about Palmer and I thought, you know, that's a lot of things that I'm interested in. I was talking to Renee actually this past week and I think his laugh is the most distinct laugh I've ever heard. The way he carries himself, how he's so charismatic throughout the day, you can tell he loves what he does. He's passionate about it. And um, it really motivated me to want to help people like he does with the same energy, the same charismatic attitude about life. That's really what this entire documentary is about. Texas citizens' freedom of choice to choose to come see a chiropractor first if they wish to and not have that dictated to them by the Texas Medical Association.